Well, the thing is, she she just went in basically almost a month before all the lockdown happened. So she wasn't in Heron very long. And then, of course, the pandemic hit and it was a lockdown. So she wasn't very, there very long. I wasn't able to um, know the get to know the people at Heron very, uh, very much because usually you get to um, to know the people to see who care who's caring for her. Um, which I wasn't able to do. And then um, and then everything everything happened. Uh, I wasn't able to go, so I don't really know what went down there. And of course, as I tried to get in touch with her, I wasn't able to, many times when I tried to, the phone didn't go through. I tried to get through to the um, receptionist. A lot of times it didn't go through. And when I did get to speak to someone, they would say, she's fine. That's all I got. It sounds a lot like uh, other stories I've heard that the communication was broken between, you know, them and their loved ones. And ultimately, what do you know that happened to your mother? Was, did she have COVID? Was she, was she neglected? Well, what a lot of things ha um, we learned, we learned after the fact, unfortunately, that um, really was shocking because we did find out that my mother was tested positive only two, three days before she died. So obviously she didn't die from COVID. And we did get to see a video that a very kind nurse um, took FaceTime. This was um, probably about 24 hours before she died. And my mother was gaunt. It looked like she had lost. My mother was a tiny woman. So for her to look so gaunt like that, it was day and night. And it looked like she hadn't eaten in days. And... Um, it was horrible to see because my mother, although she was 92, she wasn't in, besides the fact that she couldn't hear or see, she had no underlying major health issues. She went in with no, no problem. Yes, she walked with a walker, but she was otherwise fine. She could have stayed there for a number of years. There was no reason for her to, to die the way she did so quickly. Would she still be here? Had the I would definitely think so. Absolutely, absolutely. Why? Don't forget Why? this. This place was a private place. We paid for her to be there. We signed a contract with them honoring to take care of her, which they did not take care of her. I mean, you could tell that she was not taken care of. Where does that leave you now? Almost a year later, Barbara, and we're looking at the death toll in Quebec. We've just hit 10,000 and more. So what does that say to you uh, almost a year into the pandemic? What do you want to know? But the problem is, is besides the pandemic, my mother died of neglect. It had nothing to do with the pandemic. It died, she died of neglect. Yes, this was an offshoot, unfortunately, that this pandemic has happened, but that sh she shouldn't have been neglected. I mean, if I knew what was going on, I would have taken action and steps to take care of my mother. Why would she, sh why should she be left like that? She shouldn't have been with no food, no water left. I mean, she was an old woman. She couldn't take care of herself that way. To just leave them like that, people were left with diapers not taken care of, with no water, no access. I mean, she did. She was in this place to have some extra help, to be able to be um, get. Um, she couldn't cook for herself, so she uh, the meals were brought to her, or to go to the dining room, um, to help her go to the washroom. But to just leave a human being with no dignity, this is unacceptable. I mean, what were we paying for? For you to leave her in this state? No human being should be that way. And for me not to be able to be there for her, I will have to live with that forever. But this, the people who own this place, I hope that something like that happens to them so they can understand how horrible it is for, for you to have a loved one like that. I will never forget this, ever. You are living with this 
a year later and for the rest of your life, right? And forever, forever. What, what would, nothing would take this away, right? But what do you want to see done? Because right now on Monday, we're going to start the public inquiry. So why are you skeptical about, you know, what could come out of that? Well, I hope that the circumstances are going to change in long-term care facilities and that um, I don't know what's going to be as far as this was a private place. This wasn't public. Changes could be made in the public sector, but what happens to the places that you are paying for? What can be done? I mean, if you're paying this kind of money, you're assuming that there are more resources and more availability for people to, to help you take care of your loved ones. What else could be done? If you're paying that kind of money, there should be more resources. What else can be done? I don't know, but I hope there will be changes and that people will um, have more help for their loved ones. No one should be put in this kind of situation. What kind of answers do you want uh, in terms of well, I, what happened? I hope that people will, it will be confirmed that what happened to the people at Heron who died is um, confirmed for sure. And that that is brought to light for sure. And that um, action will be taken against the people of Katassa, that's for sure. What do you think, though, that, you know, the Quebec public inquiry will uncover anything new about this? Or do you think it's already pretty much out there in the public? I think, uh, I don't know what new can be discovered that hasn't already been brought to light. I think it's just maybe going to be um, maybe confirmed and um maybe the people will finally be um uh i don't know i mean uh i know what i in my heart i know that it's true because i see what happened with my mom and you know people have uh they did find um you know the there were nurses there were people from the government who walked in they saw i mean you can't take that away that was uh that that's fact so um they're gonna th that came to light so you can't take that away so uh they can't deny that what kind of justice do you think your mom and the others who suffered there need well, I mean, I'm only doing a civil case and this is a coroner case. So the only justice that's going to happen is the um, criminal investigation. And that still is ongoing. And I don't know how long that will be, uh, that will go on for. And I hope that something out of the criminal investigation will be brought to light and he will be held uh, accountable for his actions. And that's what I'm hoping for. You're thinking about the owner of uh, the Katasa yes. group? I am. So your class action lawsuit is a separate thing. What do you want to see come out of that? Well, that's just a civil case. That's only uh, monetary, which won't bring back my mother. Um, but um, the only, as I said, the only thing that will cause um, that will is the criminal investigation, and that I ha that I have, and uh, I can't. There's nothing I can do about that. That's the police. Are you going to be attending the public inquiry in person or online, just watching and hearing the testimony? It's um, unfortunately it's really all in French, but I will be getting um, um, the account afterwards, and then I can uh, get it reviewed afterwards and understand what's going on. Anything, any sort of expectations you have? Because next week will really be uh, the focus, Heron. So, what do you? What do you expect out of this whole public inquiry that will take, you know, months to do for other residents as well? You'll only get right. in, you know, months or in the next year. Right. Well, as I said, I hope what um, I hope the um, I, I just hope everything that was um, that that people did find in Heron when they did go in is brought to light and that it is an example for everyone else and that um, they do something. The government does take action and that they will make some changes. Anything else, Barbara, you wanna add that I didn't touch on? Anything else you want me to know or mention? No, I just, uh, I hope no one else has to go through what uh, my family has gone through 
And um, of course, with the pandemic, it made it different, but I don't think any human being should have to die without their family beside them. That I think is the hardest thing that unfortunately my mom didn't have her family with her. And that's, a, like I said, that'll sit with me forever. And, and uh, that's, nobody should die without dignity. And I think the people who did die at Karen had no dignity. And uh, I blame the people who owned the facility. They closed their doors. Everything they did, they didn't do the way it should be. And they should not own a home. And uh, I hope that does come to light. And um, in the months that come, I hope uh, there's some justice that will be, uh, that, that will happen.